What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about five tips that you may not hear all the time to help improve your jiu-jitsu. These are five things I wish I would have started earlier on in my jiu-jitsu journey. You may hear these tips from time to time from black belts, but for whatever reason, they enter one ear and leave out the other. The sooner that you can implement these things, the better you're going to be. So without further ado, let's jump in. Now in the six and a half years it's taken to me to get the three strike purple belt, I've made just about every mistake I feel there is to make, and I know I'll make more, but I have been able to pick up some good experience along the way, and that's what we're getting into with tip number one, efficient breathing. I don't care how in shape you are, I don't care how good your cardio is, if you are not breathing efficiently while you're sparring, you will gas out. And where this becomes apparent is when we hold our breath. This is something I used to do for years without even realizing it. I'd be fighting to get out of a chokehold, I'd be fighting to get into a new position, I'd even be shooting takedowns, holding my breath. I'm not exactly sure where this comes from, I think it's probably from having a weightlifting background, but I know there are others in jiu-jitsu with no weightlifting background that still do this. And in fact, it seems to be a common problem amongst lower belts. You might be asking, well, how do I know if I'm holding my breath? This is something that we do without even realizing it. You can ask your training partner to pay attention to these kind of things for you. A good training partner or a good sparring partner should be listening to your breath anyways. It's a good indicator of when you're tiring out. If I can tell that their breathing is increasing and deepening, I know that I have them against the ropes. I now know that they are applying more effort while trying to beat me in sparring. So asking your partner to pay attention to this is one way to figure that out. Another clue, like I mentioned earlier, is that if you're in shape, you have great cardio, you have great stamina, you're working out all the time, and you're still gassing out when you roll, there's a good chance you could be holding your breath while you're rolling, especially when you're trying to make big movements. So try to pay attention to that because that will cause you to gas out faster. Now once you've determined that you are in fact holding your breath while you roll, what are some ways to get around this? Well, I highly recommend focusing on only nasal breathing while you're working out. This is hard to start off with in jujitsu alone. You can try to focus on making this happen. It was difficult for me and I know it's been difficult for others. So where I like to start is in the gym. I only breathe through my mouth when I absolutely have to. For 95% of my workouts in the gym, I'm breathing through my nose and my nose alone. Because the air that you're breathing through your nose is filtered and warmed, it's a higher quality of air that comes from your mouth. So by all means, try to only breathe through your nose when you're working out and when you're training jujitsu. Over time, you will become more effective at nasal breathing and once you do, having the option to breathe through your mouth will be like having a sixth or a seventh gear. It'll just be that much more powerful and effective for you. Tip number two, learn to relax while you grapple. Strength is amazing and I'm a big advocate of being strong, but it's not something that we're going to use throughout the entire match. For example, in this sparring session, I'm facing off against one of our black belts named Hector. We're starting in the 50-50 position, a position I know he's more advanced at than myself, with the intent of getting a leg lock. What I want you to pay attention to is how calm he looks, and I'm trying to emulate his level of calmness. If I were to remove his belt from this scene, you could still tell he's a high level grappler just based on his body language and energy expenditure alone. The expression on his face is very neutral. He's very purposeful in his movements. He's very calculated. He's not excited. He's not breathing heavy and he's not being overly aggressive in his movements. Now, of course, there's always going to be a time for aggression and strength, particularly with this position starting in 50 50. You're not going to see a lot of that traditionally, but starting on our feet, maybe shooting takedowns, you'd see more aggression from him. But overall, his level of calmness is very indicative of being a black belt. I would say just about all of us when we start off as a white belt tend to be a little more spastic and aggressive and less intelligent with our energy expenditure. And I think that that's just part of the game. We learn to control that with time. So if you're a new white belt or even a new blue belt and you find yourself being a little more aggressive or spastic when it's not necessary, make a mental note of this and really work towards calming down. A specific example that immediately comes to mind, when I was a white belt, I would grab onto lapels with a death grip, squeezing as hard as I could, and I'd also have my entire arm flexed as hard as I could, thinking that this was safe and this was difficult for my opponent to deal with. And while it might be slightly safe depending on the circumstances, and while it might be a pain in the ass for someone who doesn't know what they're doing to deal with, that's a great way to burn out my grips and to burn out my arm strength. 
for no reason. As I've grown and progressed, I've learned that I only need to grab the lapel with as much strength that's absolutely necessary. And guess what? If they strip my hand off their gi, it's not the end of the world. I don't need to grab that gi like my life depends on it. I can grab it with just as much force as I absolutely need and do what I need to do. I'm not holding onto it with a death grip and burning out my hand, my forearm, and my upper arm. The sooner I learn to apply that mindset to my entire game, the better I started to become. I was able to conserve my energy for longer, I became more purposeful with my movements, and I noticed that I began to progress. So if you're someone who does this, always using a death grip, staying flexed up, constantly flooring the gas pedal and using all your strength, and maybe even holding your breath on top of it all, don't stress because the sooner you can apply these ideas to your jujitsu, the sooner it is that you'll be able to see that progress you've been looking for. This next tip is for you white belts and it is somewhat of a continuation of the last tip and that is being purposeful with your gi grips. I know me personally, I used to grab onto lapels and hold onto them for dear life without a plan in sight. And this is mainly because I didn't know what I was doing. But even if you don't know what you're doing with grabbing onto someone's gi, whether that be affecting a sweep or a pass, that's okay because you can still work on the idea of what you're trying to do. So if you're grabbing onto a lapel or sleeves for the purpose of, let's say, off balancing your opponent, even without knowing any sweeps or passes, I think that's great. But if you're grabbing onto sleeves and lapels just because it feels safe and you don't really know what you're doing, I think that should be an indicator that you need to work on that specific area. And by all means, I'm not knocking you if this is something you catch yourself doing. I once did it myself. Jiu-Jitsu is amazing because there's always something to learn. You're never gonna have the entire art memorized because there is so, so much to it. But if you catch yourself doing this, it's a good indicator that you need work in that area. As a new white belt and maybe even a new blue belt, if you are someone who's doing this, just know there are options. Holding on the lapel is great for breaking down someone's posture. It's great for certain sweeps and even passes. So if you're catching yourself doing these things, don't beat yourself up over it. It just means that that's an area that you can work on and get better at, which is one of the most beautiful things of jujitsu. There's always an area that we can improve on. And that's honestly one of the biggest things that draws me to the art. My next tip is also for the white belts. And there may be some of you who don't agree with me, but that is to learn leg locks with an experienced grappler. I'm definitely not saying learn leg locks with your white belt buddy. I want you to pair up with someone of experience, someone who knows the leg lock system, someone who knows the escapes, someone who knows to let go when you're being overly aggressive. My main priority is staying healthy, staying injury free, and that's what I want for you. Many people will say that learning leg locks at white belt is not only dangerous, but it's also pointless because you can't use most of them in tournaments. The way I see it in the umbrella of jujitsu, leg locks are a totally different language and they can be quite complex to learn, especially if you're someone who doesn't understand body mechanics easily. So the earlier you can get started on this journey, the better you're gonna be once you get to that point in your career that you can use them in tournaments. Again, for safety reasons, choose a purple belt, a brown belt, or a black belt to train legs with. And I can almost promise you in doing this, you're gonna give them a person to help them train legs and they're going to gladly oblige. In the almost seven years I've been training, I don't think I've ever seen a leg lock injury in the gym during practice. Any of the leg lock injuries I've seen have come from tournaments when people don't tap in time. So as long as you're training leg locks with a higher belt rank, like a purple, brown, or black, you're training with a calm demeanor and using good common sense, I think you're gonna be just fine. Personally, I love training leg locks. It's just another tool in your tool belt that allows you more options when it comes to submitting your opponent. And today's final tip, film yourself. Now, before you go ahead and bust out your camera or your phone, you wanna be respectful to your training partner and the person who's running the class. I always like to ask the teacher or the professor first if they're okay with it, and if they are, I will ask my training partner. And if I have multiple training partners in that practice, I will ask each and every one if it's okay that I film them. Everyone that you've ever seen in my jujitsu videos, I've asked permission first to film them. Now that you've gotten that out of the way, this is a great technique to review yourself and all the silly mistakes you make while you're sparring or drilling that you may not know you're doing. There have been plenty of times where I film myself, whether that was for content purposes or review purposes, and I thought I looked 
really cool in the moment doing a certain move and then I review the footage and I see nothing but mistakes. And this has substantially helped me clean up my game. It also shows you everything that you do right. And while that's very refreshing to see, it's also very validating and it's great for cementing the way you did that technique in your mind so that you can apply it better in the future. So by all means, if everyone in the room is cool with it, film yourself. You don't have to show anyone, you don't have to post it anywhere, but keep it for yourself. You can review it later on. If you've been training jujitsu long enough, I know there's probably been a time where you were submitted during a sparring session and your sparring partner even explained to you what happened and you still didn't understand how that played out. Well, if you have footage of the incident, you can go home and review it again and again and again until it makes sense. It's proven to me to be valuable countless times and I think you'll be happy that you tried it. And that's the video, guys. I hope you got something out of it. The purpose of this one was to give you some unique tips that you don't always hear online, but may have possibly heard very early on in your career and just have forgotten. I found that personally working on these five tips have helped me greatly and I hope they can do the same for you. And stay tuned because not only do we have BJJ content, we've got workout content, performance food content, and even technique content. I mean, I've got ideas for days, so sit tight. I've got more coming for you. And in the meantime, eat plants, train hard, and feel good. I'll see you in the next one.